Um, so does anyone have any questions before we start? What we would like to hear from you is what your name is, what city you live in, and why you are interested in this call. One of the strategies um, that we wanted to work on um, with our REACH grant was to discover how we can um, change policy around nutrition through Food Policy Council. Um, food Policy Councils are very active and effective in Michigan and across the country, um, but there isn't a Food Policy Council that governs Western Wayne County where our REACH project covers. The, the ultimate aim, right, of the a Food Policy Council is to help better meet the needs of all the eaters in the food system, right? And so that work should be informed by the eaters of the food in the food system. The first section, section of this was to develop some common language. So we developed um, I had a short presentation, about a half an hour, um, and gave over some concepts about what a food policy council is, what a food system is, um, and then reflected some of that third party data that we have uh, collected about um, food insecurity, um, farming in Western Wayne County, um, chronic disease, um, and food access. Food insecurity is a major issue for Wayne County as a whole. This data is from 2017, before the coronavirus ec um, epidemic, um, where 19.5% of the county population is food insecure. So we know that the, that the factors that we're ta we've talked about, like food access and affordability, um, can play a big role into the foods that we eat. But then also, Things like stress and time and culture and marketing are also important factors too. So we have this uh, third party data that really says how this is a big problem, but we wanted to get some on the ground real life experiences and perceptions to augment that data so that we can develop a food policy council and uh, some strategies that are really reflective of community priorities. So while we had data that showed us um, that there may be food insecurity in those areas, we wanted to be able to get listening sessions that could work um, as a way for us to get buy-in from stakeholders and really get a sense of um, interest and feedback for the food systems in that area. I'm going to start with question one. Um, what influences your decisions on types of food to buy and where to buy it? I feel comfortable. I grew up in Wayne Westland, so I'm there a lot for a variety of reasons. And when I'm leaving work, I go to Kroger's on Ford Road because I know it's safe. I think a lot about where food was grown um, and who grew it and some of the production practices behind that when I'm making choices. I'm a um, veggie eater, so I, I love to have good and fresh produce. I generally um, go outside of Inkster for those types of things. Number two, um, your overall experiences at the places that you get food. So if you are going to the different stores, are you, you know, is your experience at these stores positive? At Fresh Choices, they've always had a choice of meats and things like that. So uh, um, I more frequently go there now. Atmosphere as far as people and the atmosphere as far as cleanliness and uh, freshness of the food is all an, an influence on overall experience. So this one, are you able to get the food you need from the places you usually go? Live in the city of Inkster, which uh, most folks know is a food desert city. Um, we do have one grocery store to the part that we don't have um, transportation in the city. You know, people are not able to just access to get on the bus. But we That's do okay. have community gardens in the city of Inkster. That has helped a lot because the, the gardens that we grow, we generally give the food away to our seniors for free. These sessions were intended to start um, in person in, in May of 2020, but due to COVID-19, we needed to find another solution to help us facilitate those listening sessions. We try to come up with adaptations to get as much kind of community conversation and collaboration as possible but in a virtual setting. We had uh, two 
staff members in each breakout session, one as a facilitator and one to provide technical assistance. I did really like the format of it. Um, I thought that was really helpful and there was definitely some really good conversation in their breakout session and that was um, unique to food policy council conversations have been in before. So we spent a lot of time working with Beaumont Healthy Communities, um, making a, a list of questions and just kind of whittling down what um, seemed pertinent. We um, gave some training ahead of time um, on how to use Zoom uh, for those people who are not familiar and allowed people to give their input um, via the phone, via the chat, or just through Zoom communications. I think it's really valuable to get feedback from folks in the community and ask the kinds of questions that you guys asked um, to understand the landscape a little bit more before building a structure or an organization to help address some of the issues in that landscape. COVID has exposed many of the problems in the food system and has given us an opportunity to see um, what some of those issues are and what are some possibilities um, to, to develop strategies in the Food Policy Council um, to combat many of those issues. In what ways has COVID-19 impacted your experience with food? I do live in Wayne. Um, we do have a, a, a grocery store, only one in the city of Wayne. I have found that um, being a smaller store and not a chain, we haven't had any problem with them not having products. Food for me is another way of showing affection and it's very much like a community thing to me too. And we are so disconnected, we can't share those experiences. I have a car, I can get where I need to go to get what I need. Um, and I have the flexibility to go during the time of day when it's convenient for me. So as a result of the Food Policy Council, we um, created a report um, that kind of outlined those conversations in the, in the breakout sessions um, and then some of the, the information that was collected through the surveys. We wanted to put that data together to um, not only provide some strategies and priorities for the Food Policy Council to work on, but also to get that information out back into the communities. We were able to gain um, more of an understanding and insight into the wants and needs of the participants. Largely that fresh food that is inexpensive, um, it was a huge priority for the participants, especially um, vegetables, uh, fruits, and meats. And while some can get these options in their community, those that couldn't were willing to drive outside of their community um, to get the quality or freshness that they were really looking for. Although many noted that for some people it's not possible um, with lack of transportation to travel to get um, the quality and freshness that you might want. Um, and that while locally grown food was important to some participants, it was also um, important to participants to support um, local restaurants or local small grocery stores as well. In addition to creating a report of actions that the Food Policy Council should take, the listening session had other immediate systematic outcomes through new collaborations. The National Kidney Foundation of Michigan was asked to write a letter of support um, for another organization's um, nutrition education initiatives that we had never uh, connected with um, before. And additionally, um, we've had some uh, new um, conversations with some old partners um, about how we can expand Double Up Food Bucks um, into new locations, as well as um, connecting more closely with farmers markets. We've got really great um, partners in the region who are really interested in this policy systems and environmental change, um, who are gonna come to the table um, and, and be a part of this, um, this work. So. What, would, what would a perfect food system look like to you? Um, and that can include anything growing, processing, distributing. I think people need more access to the farmers markets. And we need more farmers participating in the markets if they can afford it. So growing, processing, distributing, preparing, retailing, all of that is something that we would like to see in the city of Inkston. All people have access to healthy food and as much of that healthy food as they want and need.
and that food is like culturally appropriate and relevant. We'd be eating more things that are raised within a certain, and I'm not sure what the Maya would be, but within a certain um, area and um, eating maybe foods that are more fresh than they would be if they were, if they were grown to be uh, shipped. We're excited to know that around 20 people have signed up to move forward with the Food Policy Council, which will be meeting in fall of 2020. We will begin to build a structure based on the priorities laid out in the listening sessions um, and start putting those ideas into action, which is something we're really excited about. Any other comments? I think this has been a really great discussion.